In this video, we are going to install the React Router and start to implement it and understand exactly how it works. Let's just take a quick look at what a single page application actually is and what React Router is going to give us that's going to make us have a really nice user experience and a really nice flow within our application. This is a Google website that is also a single page application. So it uses the same principles that we're going to use with React Router. So in this website, we have a header component, which is going to stay consistent throughout the entire application. The color and sort of the title and stuff are going to change, but the actual DOM element itself is going to be the same element. Certain things are just going to get updated. And then these two articles at the bottom are content. So they're separate components and they are going to get changed. The principle behind this is that with React Router and with single page applications, you have content such as a navigation bar that is going to be across your entire website. So there's no point in reloading your entire website when you can just reload the bits that have changed. So the components, the articles in this case. So if I just click on resources, for example, watch the bottom two components and the header as well. And you'll see that the header, the color changes, but the actual element itself doesn't really change. And obviously down here at the bottom, the article itself does change. So if I click on events, you'll see again. So the header stays, some new content comes in and the title changes in the header. And again, so you can see there. Now, if I open up the developer tools, and I'm just gonna make this a bit easier so we can see what's going on here. So I want you to watch the developer tools when I click on one of the navigation items. So what you'll see is whenever we have an element being updated, is you'll see a kind of purple highlight on that element. So if I just click on one of these, let me just get that to be correct. You'll see we get some purple highlighting going on here. And what this means is that that particular attribute in the element is getting updated. So the component itself is actually staying the same. We're just updating certain attributes. In this case, the background color and the selected title, for example. And then of course, we have the actual content itself. And you'll see that when we change, it jumps because the actual content itself has changed and that's new DOM elements. So you can see what's going on there. We've got this consistent navigation bar throughout our entire application, something we want to stay. And then we just add in new things whenever we have new content, new articles. So in our case, we're gonna have a navigation bar once we built it and we're gonna have a list of users. And when we click on a specific user, we're going to keep our navigation bar, but we're going to go to the user profile page and it will have that seamless flow. So it'll feel like you're clicking around on a desktop application and not that you're going away and doing an Ajax request, etc. It's time to install React Router. Head on over to your terminal and let's npm i dash dash save react dash router. That will go ahead and install React Router for us. And once that's done, we can go ahead and import that and start to implement it. Let's go ahead and run npm start, kick up our server and get everything running. And head on back over to your text editor. Head on over to your index.js component. Now, if you remember, I showed you this slide where we have the URLs and then the component that they map to. And we have this code here at the top. Now this is the code that we're gonna implement now and I'll explain exactly what it does as we implement it. To use React Router, we of course need to import it. If you remember, I mentioned that React Router is essentially just another series of React components that use this.props.children to render out your application. Let's import everything we need to get started with React Router. So the first thing we're gonna need is a router component. We then need a root component, and we then need something called hash history. 
and I'll explain what that is later on. So just bear with me with that one. I'm not going to explain it just yet. I'm going to import those from React dash router. Now, if you look at what we currently have here, we have our Redux provider and our store. And as we know, Redux passes our store to children via this dot props. And React Router works in pretty much the same way. So we're going to have a router component, which we're going to have lots of children within. And of course, we're going to have root children. So let's just get rid of our user component there. So what we have here is we have our router component, which is kind of the container for all of our routes. So we don't actually specify anything other than our history, which again, I will explain later on. So just bear with me with that one. So hash history, if I spell history correctly, is the only prop we pass to our router component. We then have various routes as children of our router, which makes sense. And each root component takes two props. It takes a path, which is our URL path. And for our user component, let's go ahead and make it forward slash users. It then takes the component that we want to render out when we go to that path. So in our case, for this users path, it's going to be our users component. So what does this mean? It means we have a router component that has children and those children are roots and each root has two props. It has a path, which is going to be our URL and then it has a component and this is just a mapping. So whenever we go to forward slash users, React Router renders out our user component. Now, if we go ahead and save this, our application should work. But before we head on over to the browser, let's just think about what's going to happen here. So before we had React Router, we would go to localhost 8080 and we'd get our application. Now we only have one route. We only have forward slash users. So what's going to happen when we go to localhost 8080? You're going to get nothing because React Router doesn't have a path for that. But when we go to forward slash users, we should get the users component. Let's just test that out in the browser. And if you refresh that page, we get a blank page. And if you open up your console, you actually get a warning saying that React Router location forward slash did not match any routes. And that makes sense because we don't have a route for just forward slash. Now, if you look at the actual URL in our browser, you will see that we're actually at localhost 8080 forward slash hash forward slash. Now, as I'm sure you can work out, that is to do with our hash histories. And essentially what hash history is, is it's essentially just a way of recording where you go as a user. So when you press back, you will go to the previous route you were on. And when you press forward, you will go to the route you were just on. So it will allow us to use forward and back and sort of keep that consistent user experience that you expect from a website. The reason we have to use that or something like that is because as a single page application, we're essentially at just one URL the entire time. And we're going to use JavaScript to update content within that URL. So our web page doesn't actually change. Our URL doesn't actually change. It's kind of the same URL. We just need to sort of hack that feeling of a change in URL. And if you remember, I used window.location when we created that fake link component and something similar is going on here. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because hash history is something you only really use when you get started, not in production, because obviously you don't want to have a horrible hash in your URL path. But we'll explore that later on. So now if we go to localhost 8080 hash forward slash users, we should get our users component and we do and we can click fetch users and we get our list of users. So you can see that we have a simple implementation of React Router done here. So we have our path forward slash users and we have our component 
of users. So then if we go to users, we get our users component. So if we were to copy that, for example, and go to test, so forward slash test, but still render out our users component, this should work. So we should go to test, and again, we get our users component, and that works correctly. Same as if we go back to users, and if we go back to forward slash hash, we get nothing. So you can see how this is working. We have our path and we have our component, and it's just simple mapping between the two. So now we've got a kind of brief overview of how React Router works, and we've implemented it for our users component. In the next video, we're gonna create some more components, and we're gonna make a bit more of a full application so we can really dive into using React Router in a full application rather than just for our one component.